Thank you so much for joining us for today's lesson. We shall be discussing the Hawaii Academic Examinations Council Mathematics Paper 2. So let's get to the paper together. We start with the section one and proceed to the section two later. It's my hope that you guys are going to get something from this particular discussion. Number one, section one. Find the value of x that satisfies the equation logarithm 2x minus 11 minus the logarithm of 2 equals to the logarithm of 3 minus the log x. So we're supposed to apply a few laws of logarithms. For example, when a negative is involved at critical points like this one, we're supposed to remember the law that says that when you have the log of a, minus the log of b. This can be solved by simply taking the logarithm of the quotient, or rather the division of the two. And with that law, then we can say that a logarithm of 2x minus 11, then this should be divided by 2 and equals to the logarithm of 3, and this is divided by x that way. After applying the law, now we can drop logarithms and equate the left hand side to the right hand side. 2x minus 11 out of 2 equals to 3 over x. We can do a cross multiplication whereby 2x becomes squared minus 11, which gets x. This is 6. Then we use what we call Okay, it's already a quadratic condition and we have very many methods of solving the same. So now we can involve what you call completing the square method. We divide by 2, x squared minus 11 over 2x equals to 6 over 2, which is 3. Then we make the left-hand side a perfect square by adding a constant, whereby the same constant is also added to the right-hand side. How do we get this constant? The constant C is gotten by taking B out of 2 squared. So negative 11 over 2, we square it. Okay, it's already negative 11 over 2. So we divide the further by 2. Sorry for that. We're supposed to be very careful in that step. Negative 11 over 2. 2, then we divide it by 2 and now square. This shall be 11 out of 4 squared. 11 out of 4 squared, which is a 121 over 16. 121 over 16. Now with this, then we can factorize the left-hand side, which is a perfect square, by taking the square root of this part, which is x, the sign that follows, which is a minus, and the square root of this part, which is uh, 11 over 4 squared. That's now the factorized form of the perfect square. This is equal to, we add, whereby we should be having 3 plus 121 over 16. You know, this gives us 10 and 9 over 16. 10 and 9 over 16 meaning that you can take square roots of both sides. x minus 11 over 4 equals to plus or minus when taking square root. And that is 3 and a quarter. Uh -huh. So how do you remain with x? Either 3 and a quarter plus 11 over 4 or negative 3 and a quarter plus 11 over 4. So now we can get x and we add 11 over 4 here. We're getting exactly 6 or the value of x as take a negative uh, 3 and a quarter then we add 11 over 4 this gives us exactly 0 0.5 negative. 
negative half. I want to confirm whether that is true. Okay, yeah, that too. So that is it. We have the two values of x, number 20, number two, sorry. The base and height of a right angle triangle were measured as 6.4 and 3.5 centimeters respectively. Determine to one decimal place the percentage error in calculating the area of the triangle. How to get the area of a triangle is we're supposed to know that area is given by half base times height according to the available information. And because we are involving errors, then why don't we talk about the range of the base and also the height? The first thing that we shall consider is the accuracy within which the base and the height have been recorded. So the height has been recorded to one decimal place and the base also to one decimal place, meaning that the accuracy is 0 0.1. Then now we can get absolute error in the recording of this particular dimensions, which is accuracy over two. Accuracy divided by two gives us absolute error in recording the dimensions. So we have an absolute error of 0 0.05 centimeters. So we can get the range of the base, whereby we take 6.4, we add or subtract 0 0.05. And this means that we will have a maximum value of 6.45 when we add, and a minimum value of 6.35 when we subtract. Then we can also talk about the height. Whereby it's 3.5 within the same accuracy and absolute error, we add or subtract 0 0.05, meaning that you can have a maximum height of 3.55 and a minimum one of 3.45 when we subtract. So we can get area maximum and also area minimum. Maximum area will be half times the maximum base, 6.45 times the maximum height, 3.55. Now this shall give us 0 0.5 times 6.45 times 3.55, you know, this gives us 11.44, 11.44875. Then we have area minimum, which will be given by half times the minimum base 6.35 and minimum height 3.45. This shall give us we multiply, and this gives us 10.95375 mm -hmm. square centimeters, then actual area. Actual area, very necessary. Actual area will be half times the base as it was recorded times the height just as it was captured. What shall this give us? This is going to be 11.2, exactly. Exactly 11.2. Now with maximum, minimum, and actual, we can talk about absolute error in the computation of the area. Remember there was absolute error in the recording of dimensions. Now we have absolute error in the computation of these particular areas. So now we can have absolute error given by maximum minus minimum over two, maximum area minus minimum area out of two. Uh huh. So I take 11.44. 875 minus 10.95375. Then I divide by 2. This gives me 0 0.2475. 2.2475. 2. 
0.2475. Then for us to get percentage error, we need the absolute error out of the actual area times 100. This one I should multiply by 100 over 11.2. And this will give me 2.21. Or according to the accuracy here, 1 dp, 2.2%. Yeah, 2.2%. That way. So that is the how we work out the question on errors. Number three, we are told that uh, the figure below shows a quadrilateral ABCD in which AB equals to 8, BC equals to 12, then BAD equals to 45 degrees, that's an angle. CBD is right angled. Then BCD is 30 degrees, just as we can see on the diagram. As we continue learning, it's good for you to know that our consultation line is 0704153306. Yeah. Then I can also bring to your attention about our program here. We're calling it the one term ahead program for the candidates 20, uh, for the students who are ongoing. Ongoing students, form twos and form threes, who shall be form threes and fours respectively in 2026. So over the December holiday, that is 10th of November, all the way to 12th of December, we shall be having Google Meet classes. And you'll be covering the 2026 term one work. So when you'll be opening, for 2026, you shall be one term ahead. Please take advantage of this program and join us for very serious programs. Then for the candidates of 2025, the Form Force are having a program of every Sunday from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Make sure you reach out through the same number, 0704-15-3366 for consultations about the same. You are highly invited to our programs. Now we proceed with number three, whereby we need now the length of BD from B to D is the length. We can apply some trigonometry here. It's right angled at B and we have this opposite. Okay, we can call it hypotenuse for this time round because it's the longer side. Hypotenuse of 12 and we have an angle of 30. Now applying some trigonometry then you'll be able to get BD. Let's use the sign, the sign of angle 30. You know, this shall be given by opposite length, which is BD, out of hypotenuse, which is 12. Meaning that to remain with BD, then we can have 12 multiplied by the sine of 30. 12 sine 30. This gives us exactly 6 centimeters. Yeah, 6 centimeters. The size of the angle, ADB, we've said this is 6. ADB means uh, the angle at this point. And here we can apply what we call the sign rule. Applying the sign rule, it means we shall have the length 8 out of the opposite angle, 8 over the sign of the angle at D. Yeah, 8 over the opposite angle at D should be the same as 6 over the sign of the anchor 45 yeah eight of a sine of opposite angle should be the same as six over the sine of opposite angle and for six the opposite angle is 45 so now we can find the value of sine d which will be equal to eight sine 45 over six eight the sine of 45 over 6, giving us 0 0.9428. 0 0.9428. Meaning that for us to get D, we need the sine inverse. So what we have, shift sign from your calculator, giving us 70.53. 70.53. 70 
five three that's simple these are it's yeah those are degrees 